Okay, good afternoon. Happy uh, Tuesday, everyone. It is uh, 3.30, so we'll call the Fargo Home Authority meeting, April 26th, Fargo Home Authority meeting to order. Uh, before we get to the minutes, any additions or revisions to the agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So move. Second. First by Dan, second by Dave. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Uh, on to number one, approval of the March 29th minutes. And Mike, thank you for uh, covering me. Yep. Covering for me on that meeting. Yeah. Uh, Move to approve. Second. First by Rick, second by Mike. All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll same sign. Carried. Any old business to bring before the authority? Okay, well, on to new business. And welcome, Jim. Hi. To the day. group. Hello. <laughs> He has some ribs in his jacket pockets. You know, I, I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> no, they wouldn't okay. fit. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no. Um, the floor is yours. All right. Um, we'll start. So you, you. you see Jim Dostal of Jimmy D's Catering on page four of your packet has requested to uh, become an approved caterer at, uh, uh, with Fargo Dome. Uh, you see page eight. There's currently a... Just a brief synopsis of his operation, followed by a menu <coughs> on 9 through 11. Uh, Jim, welcome. Yeah. If you have anything else you'd like to add or share for the group? No, I just wanted to be here if anybody had any questions for me. Um, so, Okay, I understand that uh, you recently relocated from Grand Forks. Coming down here, you cooked for friends and family and kind of yeah, work, just work work events not licensed in Grand Forks, but no, you but, were but moved to Fargo and got licensed. Yeah, just decided to make a career change and okay. try something new. I have two grown girls who live here, so we wanted to be close to them. And yeah, and I would point out to the board, uh, Jim has noted in his application he does not own uh, dishes or glassware or silverware. So if he's doing a catering event, he has disposable, obviously. But if they want china or porcelain, they would need to secure that on their own. That's not something the Fargo Dome provides either. But uh, that's just, we, we don't guarantee work or a certain number of work to any of our any caterers that partner with us as well. So uh, other than that, okay. he, he knows he's not available between <coughs> midnight and 7 a.m., but neither <laughs> am I. So if there are no <laughs> questions for Jim, or from the group, or for me. Uh, we need a motion. We would need a motion to add Jimmy D's catering as an approved caterer with Fargo. Any, op any opposition? Oh. So oh. Okay. So well, not for me, I guess. I'd mention it to a ask Amanda. <laughs> no. Okay. So moved. First Thanks. by Dave, second by Dan. Do we oh. need a Roll call. Roll call on this. Troy. Yes. Rick. Yes. Blake. Yes. Mike. Yes. David. Yes. Dan. Yes. Super. Welcome right. aboard, Jimmy. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Jim, appreciate thank you very it, much. everybody. Yeah. Hey. Good you, uh, you can thank stay. You, you can stay if you yeah. want, but you're welcome to leave as well. Yeah. 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 No, I need to get home. Can you uh, do me a favor? Take Barry with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So, maybe. Maybe. Maybe get him some barbecue. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe another time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm sorry. I guess you. Yeah. You're. Some. You're up. So number Pretty item B on um, page 12 of your packet is the month of March and year-to-date financials. Uh, as always, the month is the left-hand side of the page. The year-to-date is on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, focusing on the month of March right now, uh, nine event days with an attendance of 49, just over 49,000 compared to a budget of attendance of 47,200. Uh, total event income of uh, just over 580,000. Uh, which is down a little bit compared to a budget of 637,000 and other event income uh, other other income of 155 and a half thousand compared to a budget of 138 and expenses of just over 425 and a half thousand compared to a budget uh, of 371 so we had a net surplus for the month of $310,800 which is great 
unfortunately is about ninety three thousand dollars below the budget at four hundred four thousand uh, dollars not really concerned about that based on the amount of activity and what is upcoming as well uh, but based on that so going over the event income you can see where concerts were actually fifty three thousand below budget if you recall we budget six concerts eighty five hundred attendees for each on average one hundred forty five hundred forty thousand net income or event contribution for each if you will that is an average but the shows shows we had was elton john which was over seventeen and a half thousand but then a christian contemporary with toby mac uh, good attendance in the six thousand range and then slipknot which uh, is mike's one of mike's favorite bands uh, hard rock but again in that six thousand range so but when we budget the, the when we budget we just take averages we don't know specific shows so three but three budgeted concerts ran through uh, you know toby mac no alcohol sales it's a christian contemporary per caps typically are quite low for that compared compared to uh, but overall uh, very good very strong per caps at slipknot but obviously you don't it's not a 10 or 12 person 10 or 12 thousand person again Elton John, strong merch, good per caps, but it's a uh, older than average crowd uh, for concerts coming to that. I think I'd seen uh, Slipknot made as much as Bob Seger with less than half the attendance. Yeah, with, you're uh, thinking back right around there. So, yeah. uh, but so overall, that's good. Uh, mm -hmm. On the family side, the rodeo uh, had good attendance, good food and beverage sales. Uh, it was good to have it back. It had it been gone for two years, so first time since 2019 that that show had been here uh, so good to have that one back uh, Red River Valley Sports Show uh, slightly lower attendance not much but obviously you, you bring that out of the course of parking and food and beverage and ticketing user fee things such as that you get a slight differential from budget as Susan also pointed out uh, in the finance committee it was ever so slight but I think this might have been the first month since January or February of 2020 that meeting room activity actually met or exceeded our normal budget for that month so that's that's great to see uh, meeting room events uh, have picked up again uh, we've got a big border states is coming in this next week so it's, uh, we're looking forward there on the income or on the expense side uh, labor uh, about five thousand below or above budget on there uh, with the, the full-time and part-time we kind of talked the schedule we'll talk more but we're, we're back to paying overtime and, and I think March was a crap load of overtime uh, with as busy as everything was uh, and then same thing on the operation side uh, our expenses continue to rise both you know the energy usage whether it's steam and heat steam heat cooling uh, and electricity uh, plus just the maintenance supplies and everything. So any questions on month uh, March year-to-date wise then uh, on the right hand <coughs> side you can see we've had 24 events total event attendance of about 95,000 compared to a budget of 29 events and 110,000 so about 15 and a half thousand below budget uh, the large chunk of that would probably be due uh, we still uh, with things ongoing earlier in the year the, pa the Kiwanis Pancake Carnival not a revenue event for us but it's an attendance event uh, Tenish thousand, so that's that's a big chunk of, of that. So it, it looks on the attendance side. Oh my goodness! On the finance side, it's uh, uh, total event income of just over just about one point one one million one hundred fifty thousand, compared to a budget of one million one hundred twenty five thousand, and expenses million two hundred sixty six thousand compared to a budget of a million one hundred sixty four so about one hundred thousand above budget however we do still have a net surplus of three hundred eighteen thousand which is about sixty five thousand below the budget of three hundred eighty three thousand the other stuff is there as, as we've talked about you can see labor we're, we're consistent with budget I think that number is just going to get a little bit bigger here as we continue to go we had adjusted labor bill rates uh, starting in January 1st of 2022 to account for a very large increase in, in 
expense we took in 2022. Uh, we're by no means uh, on the same margins of what we used to be covering. Uh, through our event partners, they're, they're covering some of it, and the father will continue to cover some as everybody continues to struggle for labor uh, and operations just with as busy as it's been, as cold as it's been, as windy as it's been, uh, just a lot of extra labor and extra equipment. And unfortunately, you'll hear the same thing from the city and public works and everything is it's, is it's used a lot and it's cold and it's icy, your outdoor equipment breaks and, and it's gotta get fixed. So. Any questions on the finances? Dave. Move to um, approve the financial report. A motion from Rick on the March financials. Second. Second from Troy. Roll call. Troy. Yes. Rick. Yes. Blake. Yes. Mike. Yes. David. Yes. Dan. Yes. Okay, thank you. And just one other note on that. Um, I believe Susan sent out an email to all of you regarding the question at the finance committee on the accounts receivable balance. Oh yeah. Just due to the <coughs> timing of when Machine Gun Kelly went on sale at the end of the month. Uh, flipping over, so mainly ticket sales on that. So it, it was another one of those where, where uh, I was out of practice on, on looking at it and seeing it. It's been a, it's been a long time since we had a lot of events on sale, so it's, it's a good feeling, but it's it, it, it's a panic when, when you ask that question and go, hmm, how do I keep a straight face and say, I have no idea. So moving on to page 21 then, our past events since our last meeting. Uh, or your last meeting, which was March 29th, I believe. As we came out, we talked a little bit of finance, but since then, obviously, we had the Shrine Circus in here uh, was April 1st, 2nd, 3rd. Uh, good attendance, slightly up from, from the last couple of years, uh, or I should say 2019. That again was a show that hadn't been in here since 2019. <coughs> Quick change over to the building uh, in the South End show <laughs> with uh, Shine Down on April 6th. And then the NDSU coaches uh, with Sanford and the North Dakota High School Coaches Association had a football clinic that did not use the football field or the arena. The turf was not out, but uh, they used all of our meeting rooms and our lobby and then did their things over at the uh, practice uh, at the bubble. On Wednesday the 13th then we were into the Gate City Bank Theater uh, for Jersey Boys. Um, fairly well attended. Uh, but Jersey Boys is a unique show, a yellow card show, as they say in the Broadway world. So a lot of added expenses, a lot of added, uh, added uh, testing for uh, COVID things such as that. So it'll be, I think, break even uh, with all the extra expenses that were added on there. Um, and as we've said before, that is the last uh, Broadway show that we'll be doing in the Gay City Bank Theater. As um, they just proved to be. Difficult on the building, difficult on the staff, and difficult on the finances. Uh, so we're moving into something different. <coughs> uh, after Easter weekend, then we had a busy weekend last week uh, with Sanford Health in here for an employee recognition event, setting up on the 19th, the event on the 20th. And then Mercy Me was actually in the basketball set. Um, and so that is a set that we've talked about. Trying to use more worked well, uh, over 6,000 people. I don't know the exact number is still being worked out, but it's uh, pretty successful. A few little tweaks we have to do on that, but it sets up well. That set sets up well in that 35, 4,000 to 7,000 range, uh, which there is a lot of content in that attendance area uh, that doesn't have as big of productions and things such as that that we hope to be able to uh, run some more events through the building uh, using that setup. And then an overnight conversion, uh, moving the, the seats back because we were in the basketball set and getting the foot, football turf out uh, for this past Saturday for uh, the final NDSU spring practice uh, and working through that to go. Any questions on the past events? I have just one question. Yes. So when we have a, a tornado warning in the area and you decide to have everybody leave like they did, what? What prompts the decision to have people leave the building, for example, when there's a tornado warning? Well, we all know that our media gets it perfect and right all the time. Right. Uh, but we did not, the building was not a vacuum. Okay. It, my understanding, I had left at 2 o'clock that afternoon. And so Bernie was covering it, so he could explain more if you have it. But the, the decision by the event promoter was made 
to end the practice early. That would be NDSU. Okay. And so I believe the announcement was made somewhere to the risk because they had already, since softball was going on, NDSU softball was going on, and that was an outdoor event, they had already quote unquote evacuated the, the softball field. <coughs> so uh, what I, the announcement that was made that the due to the weather, the event was being completed or stopped or earlier, it wasn't. All events are important, but I think it, of a level of priority or high priority of an event, the final spring practice has much a lower priority level than an actual NDSU football game. So the, the, it was made, the announcement was made that the, the event is being stopped. There's weather outside. Due to that, you're welcome to stay in the farm room, but we will be bringing you down to the lower level to just quote unquote shelter in place uh, if you so choose. We can't stop people from leaving the building. Uh, there was not an eminent threat in Fargo. Now, if there was an eminent threat in Fargo, we may have held people inside the building, which we have done in the past, like with Ribfest. Uh, but at a certain point in time, everybody is of their own free will to leave if they want. But we just offered them shelter since everything was still forecasted or being reported that it was west of West Fargo. Um, and, then it, and then it went over. So uh, I think additional communication could have happened. It's, it's a matter of who should have made that communication, who was responsible for it based on the level of event. Uh, but it wasn't the decision that was made by Fargo Dome. It was a decision that we had, once we see weather alerts, we start constantly communicating with the event promoter and those, those involved with that and then allow them to make the decision. If they don't make the decision, we think a different decision should be made have further discussions with them as far as no, we think this is the route to proceed. Okay. Thank you. Yep. The coaches clinic, is that a is that a rental event or is that part of the set days? Um, that, or is that a okay. best answer I learned in a marketing class, the best answer to anything is it depends. Oh, okay. Uh, a little of both. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's actually right. changing format. <coughs> it used to be an event put on by NDSU football. So that's what triggers more of a partner relationship. Uh, we still try to maintain that partner relationship, but however, due to NCAA changes within the NCAA and what can and can't be done and who they can get to, to teach or, or speak at these seminars and conduct the seminars, uh, it's no longer feasible for a coaching staff to put it on, so the North Dakota High School Coaches Association and Sanford are coming in. So that kind of changes the relationship of, um, it was not a, it was not a profit center for NDSU football, so therefore the Fargo Room doesn't make it look to be a profit center. Uh, it kind of falls under the whole non-revenue producing events of the overall operator, yeah. you know, like we do with with NDSU for uh, <coughs> commencement or, or things such as that where we basically cover our hard costs. Mm -hmm. If it goes to, if it becomes a profit center for something else, then it is my belief that the Fargo Dome should also potentially uh, share in some of that profit center. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Uh, moving forward then to the uh, page 22 in the month of May, uh, still busy, not as many As many big events in the arena, but definitely high profile marquee events. Uh, the, as I mentioned, this upcoming week in the meeting rooms, uh, <coughs> Border States will be in there uh, for four days, setting up, having their event, tearing down. Uh, then in the, on Friday the 6th, the V Star comes in with Paw Patrol for three performances on Saturday the 7th and two performances on Sunday the 2nd or Sunday the 8th. Uh, selling quite well, so we're very happy with that. That will be also in the Gate City Bank Theater. The following week, uh, NDSU comes in to set up for, for spring commencement, which, as I said, may not be hugely attended. It's good attendance, but it's a very high profile, very important event to, to everybody involved with that. Uh, and they will have their two ceremonies on Saturday the 14th. Uh, that'll get torn down. Uh, moved out on the 14th, 15th, and 16th with the Essential Health Fargo Marathon, then moving into the building starting on the 17th with events starting on the 17th, and then the main runs, Youth Run and Health Expo on Thursday the 19th, 5K and Health Expo on Friday the 20th, and the 10K Half Marathon and Full Marathon on the 21st. 
uh, operations with that cleaned up and re kind of reset into our graduation or commencement ceremony set as then Fargo Public Schools will be in and have their high school graduations here. Uh, all three of them, North, South, and Davies, and the times will be noon, 3, and 6 p.m. on Sunday, the 29th of May, so still very busy. Uh, and then right after that, the, uh, I didn't mention, but it was late getting into the room today as we were letting in the AstroTurf people there here. Their crew was here to start removing the existing turf surface uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. They'll run through about next Tuesday, uh, get that cut out of the building, and then they will return uh, Tuesday the 31st of May or Wednesday the 1st of June to put in the new the new surface. In fact, talking to them right now, he said, yeah, I saw on the schedule to your, your turf is being manufactured right now. Great. If no other questions, that would end my report. Okay, thanks, Rob. We'll move to 3C committee reports. Sure. The uh, Ground Building and Finance Committee met on April 20th. Just a few items there on the project and capital updates. We've already reviewed the financials. As Rob reported out, the fire alarm system replacement is uh, about complete. The main part is the remaining smaller parts are, will continue to be worked on through the summer. There's a keyless entry project that's ongoing. Um, continue to work on that. Turf replacement project, Rob just referred to that piece. Uh, it was announced last week, I think everybody knew, that the Gate City Bank renewed their branding rights for the Gate City Bank field. Yeah, be for $2.5 million over 10 years. And the initial part of the replacement project will take place this week, as Rob indicated. Um, that's it for projects, Rob, unless you've got more to add. All right, and then moving on to the escrow balance. Um, as of 228.22, the escrow fund had $46,926,000 in the fund. And the year to date through February 22, the return on that was a negative 2.13%. That's all we'll have from building and finance. Any other business? Any comments, questions? Okay. We have a motion from the committee chair. Roll call. Troy? Yes. Rick? Yes. Blake? Yes. Mike? Yes. David? Yes. Dan? Yes. Okay. Are we on to nominating committee? So the uh, the Fargo Dome Authority nominating committee consisted of Troy, Nancy, and myself. And we bring forward the following appointments uh, for the upcoming year. So uh, Mike Ellington as president. Rick Steen as Vice President, Dave Supis, Treasurer, and Nancy Jordan, Secretary. I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve that slate of officers. Okay, motion by Troy. Second. Second by Rick. Any comments, questions? Okay, roll call. Troy? Yes. Rick? Yes. Blake? Yes. Mike? Yes. David? Yes. Dan? Yes. Okay. It's quick. Any other items, comments? We're adjourned. Oh.